Hello everybody, and it's time for an all new season of the Monster Movie we Tournament. Wait a minute, wait just one minute. Dan, what are you doing? I'm trying to film here. I know, but this is important. I've got a new idea for the intro to your show. Okay, alright. Just hold on a second. I'm going to do this real quick. Alright, this better be good. Yeah, it will. Give me a little boost. Oh, thank you. Got a seat. Alright. Alright. Now, what you got? The script is sitting right there. Oh, okay. So, do you want me to find the return together? Oh. Okay. Oh, oh okay. Yep. Come on, I'm Sorry, I'm doing the best I can here. Oh, I'm a little irritated here because you know me well enough to get my head on the right way. Oh, okay. Alright. So you want me to read this? You read okay. the first, I read the second, we read the third together. Got it? Alright. Hey, I'm Pear. I'm not so Pear. And, and we're, we're the, the Trojan Bears. Look, this won't work, Dan. Why not? Two things. Number one, this is just a ripoff of the Game Grumps intro. Why does that matter? You can't do that. There's no originality in that. And number two, this doesn't really make any sense. I mean, hey, I'm Pear. I mean, when have we ever said something like that? And what is this, we're the Trojan Pears? I'm the Trojan Pear, you're Dan. The dragon. Well, look, Dan's my real name, but your real name isn't the Trojan Pair. It's the Trojan Don't say it. But it's the truth. It's not your real name. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm the Trojan Pair. You are not. Okay? That's the way it works. Fine. So, you need to get back to the drawing board and give me something in time for my next series that's coming up later. Well, look, in the meantime, can I be a part of this review that you're going to have um, here right now? Maybe some other time. So, right now, we're going to have the season premiere of the Monster Movie Tournament. Go Magic Serpent! Well, let's get started, and welcome again to the season premiere of the Monster Movie Tournament. This is the actual Monster Movie Tournament itself, the 68 Movie Tournament. We're doing one matchup today, and we're starting our first round of the Monster Movie Tournament, which is a series of four different matchups. If you're familiar with how the March Madness style tournament in the NCAA works, this is going to follow that same sort of format. You have four matchups of matching seeds. Uh, you have a 216, a 216, 211, and 213 matchups. Fighting for the right to be the seed that will then go on to face the uh, corresponding movie. This one that we're looking at is actually the number 16 seeds, The Host, and The Magic Serpent. They will be competing for the right to go up in the second round against the number one overall seed, King Kong. Also, in a couple weeks, I'll be doing 
my MMIT tournament of about four matchups to get started on that. And so we'll do that in a series of every month during this season. We'll do our main tournament and then we'll have a video later on of the MMIT tournament. Enough of the introductions though. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first matchup on here for the host of the Magic Serpent is the host as the higher seat. And I want to first point out that uh, through my outlets such as Facebook, Twitter, and uh, even the commenting on YouTube, I was able to get a series of uh, poll questions out of which movie you thought would win, or which movie you liked better. Either case, the results here of the poll show, well, the host had 67% of the vote. And while looking into this tournament, you might say, well, the Magic Serpent, which is the play-in number two champion, dominated its way through the second play-in tournament. So you would think, just based upon momentum, history, that sort of thing, the Magic Serpent would probably come in to a movie such as The Host, which, let me state, I have never seen prior to this tournament, should be able to win. I mean, Magic Serpent has shown that it can score in the 90s at will. Every round it did that. And then a movie like The Host, which, you know, you get that level of the unknown, and usually movies where I've watched the first time don't score that high unless it was the magic serpent. Now I will say uh, I think most people have probably seen the host before they've seen the magic serpent just because the host is a, even though it's a movie that I had personally never heard of until you know like a year or two or three ago it's actually movie that was more mass-produced, one that a lot of people are more aware of, and actually even has a sequel coming out in the near future. The Magic Serpent, however, is a movie that is not as well known, in fact is just a movie that's been around since its time and nobody really has heard of it, and unless you're one of those kind of people that goes back and looks at these old movies you probably never have heard of it. Let's look now at the matchup itself. Now I was fortunate enough to be able to see the movie The Host via instant streaming. And as I watched it, there is one thing, um, well, I can't even say one thing. There are a lot of things about it that just stand out in the movie. First of all, this movie has a lot more elements to it than what I basically thought. I watched the movie for the first uh, few minutes, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes or so, and it was kind of playing to the type of movie I thought it was during that time for the most part. But then I started to notice elements about this movie that made it quite unique to me. Uh, the type of movie that actually carries a lot more than just what you would think. It's not just your typical sci-fi horror monster movie, which it is that. It, I mean, it, there's moments that are tense and scary and you've got the monster, the CGI effects with them, all that. But then there is a lot of what I would say, humor. And this humor, this comedy is very different. It's a more sort of absurd situations, absurd, absurd characters, just some plain weird stuff. 
So we have number one, the sci-fi horror element. We have number two, the comedy element, which, you know, that in of itself is nothing new to movies because you have plenty of movies that will do that. But then what makes the comedy aspect even weirder to it is the fact that it contrasts with the third point, which is the political satire. It actually tries to send somewhat serious messages. It becomes very serious at points about political issues, um, pollution, and the government, and all that sort of stuff. And it's like, okay, so it's being funny one minute, it's being kind of tense and scary the next, then it's being a satire the next. And so, you know, you've got a lot of stuff going on. And the movie does feel like it, it, it actually does a lot. It feels like it's a much longer movie than what it actually is. But I kind of like that, how you can get a movie that, that seems like an epic, but then it's not really that long, so that you don't waste too much time, but you don't feel like you're cheated out of a story because they felt like they had to cut it down. Probably one of the best examples of some of the downright weird moments of this movie that makes it strange is this moment right here uh, where the family, and let me kind of go background on this if you've never seen this before. Uh, the movie is about a monster that has been created years ago through the process of uh, irresponsible hazardous waste disposal. And this thing has grown and it terrorizes this community of people and in fact captures this little girl of this father and so the father and his family think she's dead they mourn her death but then he finds out that she's not dead she's in fact alive that she's kind of kept in this hole um, and so the whole movie then proceeds to be about them going to find her but also having to avoid the government and all the stuff that's going on with that. And actually at this one point, the family had spent like the whole day looking for her and they had come up with nothing. And so it was late, they were hungry and tired, so they go to this uh, abandoned uh, food shack and they start eating. That's when the moment comes up right here where the they're they're just eating and then all of a sudden in pops an unexpected face. Yeah, I mean, okay, so the daughter is there, the father sees the daughter, and starts feeding her. So you think, okay, is this a hallucination? You say it must be, because they, you didn't see her come in with them, and they didn't say anything, so he must be hallucinating. Okay, so now none of one has seen it, and feeds are two. So is that one kind of person hallucinating too? They all see her. What the heck is going on? Are they all hallucinating? Did they all 
see her? I mean, you would think, well, they must have got her. They must have got her. She must actually be there. That must be what happened. But then you think reasonably, it's like, no, well, they didn't come in with her. There was nothing said about that. Why would they do that? Well, let's be perfectly honest. She's still in the hole. They didn't find her. So what the heck just happened here? I don't know what happened here. The only logical possibility is they mass hallucinated. They all thought they saw her and we're seeing her too as part of their mass hallucination because she's not there. She's really not there. So. What are we seeing? It's not a memory. This is happening right now in that time. Because when did they ever go doing something like that? <sighs> Excuse me, I just gotta go. She's there, she's not there. I just don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense. Can you help me figure this out? Yeah, I'll tell you if you get me out of jail. You know what? Forget you. I don't even know why I came to ask you for assistance. You're getting your own series as it is anyway. I got a review to finish. I'll get out of jail. You'll see. <laughs> All seriousness in this, it is a very weird part. But it doesn't take away from the movie. It still plays completely to what the movie is. It would be even weirder if it was something totally off kilter that made absolutely no sense in what the style of the movie was. We're already aware that this movie has some weird, absurd situations that come up in it. At the same time, trying to be serious. Another thing about that serious aspect, not just the seriousness of it, but also in just the whole overall style of what it's doing. It reminds me of another movie. Now, it's completely different in a lot of ways, but it just reminds me in the sort of substance of what I was watching. And that is... District 9. Now, if you've never seen District 9, you probably don't know what I'm talking about, but if you have, maybe you somewhat understand what I'm trying to talk about in that aspect. Now, understand District 9 doesn't have the absurd comedic situations that this movie has, but it does have a lot of that same feel to it. It feels like a very similar movie in a lot of ways. Well, but all in all, uh, this movie is, is a good movie. I cannot say anything bad about it. The weird stuff, it is what it is. It's still a good movie, though. However, um, not knowing exactly how much to like it, the best I can really do for this movie is to give it 84. Now, I know what you're thinking if you've watched the Monster Movie Tournament videos in the past. You say, well, Magic Cert's never scored lower than 90 before. That's true. But, hey, this is a very good movie. Probably the best movie out of all the other movies in the second play in the tournament. And it only scored 84. Plus, I will admit, I think a lot of the scores in the second play in the tournament were were bloated a little bit. Um, but I think Host still has a chance. So we're going to see. And since we've talked about this magic serpent so much, I don't think it needs much introduction as to what it's about and what it will do as far as you know, the different elements of it. So let's just go ahead and watch it.
Whoa. Uh, well, <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> the Magic Serpent is just that good of a movie. It is beyond what most of the other movies are that I've watched so far in this tournament. Now don't get me wrong, the Magic Serpent has its flaws, like that one part of the movie. No, I don't want to hear that. If you took that one part out, the rest of the movie would be flawless, basically, to me. I would have nothing at issue about with it. Um, particularly, hey, there's no annoying kids in this movie. That's one thing that's always a drawback from it. But you got that one thing. Still, this movie has the action. It has the monsters. It has the monster battles. It has the neat little uh, sound effects that come from Toho movie, Godzilla Monsters, which is kind of weird, but, you know, it has that. And it, it's a fun little movie. It's just so enjoyable. And there's nothing about it, uh, almost nothing about it, that makes you question it. And, to be honest, I think Connor Anderson, who says, The host is good, but the magic serpent just wins. All the way. Amen. And, truly, I couldn't say it better myself. And so, I give the magic serpent a score of 94. Which means, by 84... 94, Magic Serpent is the winner, and will go on to face King Kong. That's all for this time. So join us in a couple weeks when I will do my MMIT tournament introductory with about four matchups from there. Stay tuned on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube for updates about the matchups and who you think will win in each of those four matchups. Until then, this is the Trojan Pair, encouraging you to enjoy your movies. Bye-bye.